My name is I'm from New Orleans. I live, I used to live in an open night ward. On the 28th, we evacuated to Ruston, Louisiana at 3 o'clock in the morning. We didn't have nowhere to stay. My whole house was gone. My family, half of my people died. All my friends mostly died. I really lost everything. When we came to Ruston, we didn't have nowhere to stay. We went to all the hotels, it was a book. We met this man, Mr. Jack, and he gave us a two-bedroom house. We lived with 40 of my family members. We moved to this dome, and we stayed up in there with the evacuees, the rest of the evacuees, and we had to stay up in there just for three days because they had nowhere else for us to stay. And we moved to Carruthers, and we stayed up in there for like a couple of months. We moved. Me and my family and the rest of my family came down back from where it was and we moved back to Carruthers. We found us a house. It was 25 people living in a seven bedroom house. So all of us had to stay up in there. We went back to New Orleans. All my aunties and all of them started taking sick. We had two babies. It was my little two year old cousin and my three month year old cousin. She, my cousin just had her. And all of them started taking sick. Nobody wasn't feeling good. We had to rush everybody to the hospital. And we didn't know what to do. We had no food, no clothes. So this man, Mr. Jack, he gave us money to buy us food and clothes. And he just started taking care of us until he found us a house to stay in. That I miss all my friends. And I love the ones that died. And I'm just so sad that all they had stayed down there. And I saw most of my friends on the house just jumping in the water. My family, people I knew for a long time. And I just started meeting a lot of new people. And to come to find out that I lost all of them right after the hurricane. And I just want to say that I miss all of them. And I wish I could see my best friend, Danisha. Because I ain't see her. The last time I talked to her was on the day we left. And after that, I ain't see her. Some people tell me she did, some people tell me she alive, so I don't know. Do you plan to go back? Yes, my mom plan to go back, but I don't want to go back. No? Do you <laughs> like it here? I'm starting to like it. Yeah. Yeah. You made a lot of friends here? Yes. Yeah. It's nice. Like you heard all the teachers talking about it's a hurricane and then all of a sudden, the uh, principal came yeah. on, and it's like, uh, we have a new students and try to make them welcome, and it was like, yeah. okay. It was hard to try yeah. to get to know everybody and remember everybody's name. Yeah, because like at first it was like, and you heard about it, and then to like when they showed the on the news and stuff to see it, it was like, man, was can't believe it. Yeah, I can't believe it happened to us. And then like, they act really different from how we did. Like, yeah. they're... They have a lot of energy. Yeah, <laughs> they're completely different from us. I just remember, like, when the people from New Orleans came back, it was kind of, like, weird, like, because ev everything changed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, yeah. like, met yeah. new people and yeah, there's experienced like, new things. Like, yeah. Julia, who was that? Everybody's like, Julia's a model. And everybody's like, who's that model? she's pretty. And then yeah. Bria, oh my God, Bria. Uh, Bria. It's hilarious. <laughs> I actually got a girlfriend within the first week. From New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they they're pretty cool people. <laughs> I met I met her family. They all seem like laid back sort of. Like the weather and stuff like that is way different and just like seeing stuff on TV is like 
it's weird how it could happen down there, but it didn't happen, happen up here. here. Yeah, hot. and then you see how it's sudden turn. You see how, it's how it's everything good. is like destroyed down there, and how everything's still up here. We have, and they don't have anything down there. And like whenever they go home, they don't have a home, but we right. still do. Yeah, I messed up. I feel like it's like act, they act like nothing happened, and it's like all together they never did. That'd be hard. I have a friend. He's in our band, and. He, he's from New Orleans, like, the very middle, like, one of the lowest parts of New Orleans. And just his whole house, he had this nice, like, two-story home, and it was just, like, demolished. demolished like, everything gone. They had, I, I think they just got done remodeling and everything, and all their, like, all his equipment, he just had to buy all new stuff because his dad went home and it was all floating in his house. Um, yeah, they have like those, like in the magazines, the before and after pictures, and like Bria's house is really pretty, and like no. all the Christian, Christian's house is really pretty, and then he has like, they showed the slideshow, and it's like destroyed, and everything inside of it was gone. It's all nasty and mildew. And Bria has, Bria has all those pictures of her fireplace, so then she can't take them on because all that mold and crap's on it. Before so. the hurricane hit, I was there, and we were going sightseeing, and like the strange weather started happening, like. Hail started happening in the middle of summer, and like hey, like he said, my I had a girlfriend within the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all these people that we see, like a whole bunch of friends I have. They're from New Orleans and stuff. It's nice to know all them. Yeah, it's nice to be friends with like with someone new, like you don't know about them, but you get to like find out more about them and what they do with their everyday life when they're not here. They're there. Like, the stuff they do is so much different. Like, even the food they eat. And the way they talk. And the way they oh. talk. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It makes you want to, like, know what their accent is and stuff. Yeah, Bria, she's all like, no, baby. No, baby. But, but the weird thing is, like, it seems like they talk more country. Because yeah. they're yeah. more south of us, but they, like, they really talk don't. way more north. See, now that the food, like, all the food's all gone, so we're not going to have any good food anymore. <laughs> I'd like, like, like the shrimp. I mean, that's good. That's the best shrimp ever. So now we're just going to have to find another source. And, and then it, like, kind of makes you feel bad because, like, only so much you can do. Like, like the flood buckets. Yeah, that we, we tried to help, yeah. but, like, what's, if you lose a house, what's some cleaning material you're going to do? And it's, like, help it's kind of upsetting because, like, we're only in eighth grade. We, you know, like, we're millionaires and they go and fix up New Orleans and, and back to the basics. But a lot of New Orleans people, they're not liking the way that they're rebuilding New Orleans. I just want it to be like the old New Orleans. But it's, it'll take forever if you think about it. I mean, yeah, everything they yeah. it took Enjoy. hundreds of years to make it how it is. Now they and have to start over from scratch. Mm -hmm. All the monuments, and everything. Like New Orleans, it's like, it's something because like, to go through the hurricane and stuff, and then they still had Mardi Gras, and then a lot of people still showed up, and it's like unbelievable. Cause like I don't know if Reston can do that, like our annual peace festival. If we go through a hurricane, I doubt we gonna have one. Know, like yeah. the next coming up year, but they still did it, and it still pulled out to be good. I still do. It's weird how they can, like, say if my home was like happening. Like in my equipment, all my music stuff, everything that I spend, <laughs> you cry, everything I spend my life on, dude, I wouldn't know what to do, and I, it's just kind of like. And they can be like they've done it before, and like everything is like they're not even stressed about it. Well, like they're stressed, but it seems like it doesn't bother them. They don't show yeah, it. Yeah, like Bria said, she we were talking about how like how she went down there, and she got all these pictures, and she has like all these friends, and she doesn't even know where her best friend is is and everything, and she's got some people here from New Orleans she's never met before. And she's meeting them and like getting to have friends with them. But she like went down there, and they had the paper, and it's telling all these people that died. And she knew them. She said it was really hard to like Read see how they it. caught all her like her best friends and all her family and stuff down there. At Ruston Junior High School, we had about a hundred students that came to our school because of the evacuations of Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. Through the support of our local churches and local uh, parents and students, we were able to provide uniforms, school supplies, and just make this a second home for these students. 
Many of the students, when they did have to go back, cried because they wanted to stay here. Our class sizes were increased, but our teachers made the best of a bad situation, and they used a lot of the, um, their content to talk about what had happened in Louisiana. Our social studies classes looked at the hurricanes and what had been caused by it economically, and then also our science classes, of course, st studied the different types of weather disasters. Um, our English classes wrote about it, wrote letters, um, so we tried to incorporate so that these students felt at home um, while they were here. We also had some tutoring sessions set up locally in the community for these students um, at Tech and also in the community. Actually the students that were evacuated from the children's home in South Louisiana because and I guess I took these students under my wing because I felt so sorry for them because they got caught up and all the judicial process. Many of them were getting ready to go back to their families and their homes and because of the movement to North Louisiana to the children's home here in Ruston, the whole process has been, was delayed and many of them are just now, six months later, getting to back into the judicial system to go home. So they were totally misplaced and their environment was totally changed. Um, the children's home where they were in New Orleans was a much more restrictive environment compared to what it was here. So we had some, some concerns in that area with, um, with those students but because they have already been had so many transitions to go through. Um, and that was a concern not only for those students but for the other students who had never you know, been around kids from New Orleans and the safety issues and things that they are exposed to. Um, we did take up some money um, from the teachers and students to help. We really didn't even have to ask. As soon as it happened, they said, what can we do to help? And different groups did different things um, because some of our students don't have the financial means to give either, so they gave their time and, and effort. I wish that those that did come could have stayed. I hate that they had to be uprooted, not once, but sometimes twice and sometimes three times. And I wish if we were going to get them that we could have kept them for the whole year. I think it would have it helps stabilize them in some respects. Hi, I'm the one. Her name's Joanna. The home. Her house. The, the one. The water rose. I. Her house Next was destroyed. I think. You have. What? Their house, the water rose. Her, her mom's, and Dommy's house um, is her brother, I'm guessing. The water rose and it destroyed pretty much everything. Okay. Nothing was left. In her story, Joanna is communicated as much as she can with her interpreter, Caitlin, about her experiences is how she left Shelmet, how she came to Ruston. Um, we've learned through her mother and through bits and pieces of teaching, pieces of teaching her all year, that um, Joanna speaks a sign language just with her mother. That it's a sign language that's not necessarily recognized. So we've had to help her develop language skills and to learn how to understand where she's coming from. Um, when the hurricane hit, she was not really aware that a hurricane had happened or why she had to leave her home or where she came to. So it's taken several months for her to come to that understanding. And we've really enjoyed teaching her and helping her. And she's actually leaving tomorrow to move back to Chalmette. Your mom, dad, grandfather, grandmother, where are they? The dad. Her dad. Oh. And. <laughs> hey. Oh Lord. Doctor. Okay. Um, her dad, when he was down south, he cut himself at their old house trying to clean it up, and they went to the doctor. My mom. Okay. Hey. Oh. Her I, mom walks mom. with a walking stick, and I guess hurt herself while they were trying to get out from New Orleans. Her mom, mom Joanna. Hi. Wait. House. They built a new house, and her grandma's hey. old hey. and hurt. Okay. Mama, you died. Her grandfather died during it. I'm sorry. You, mom, grandma, and Joanna. Good. They're moving back down to Shalmet when they can.
Um, I knew when Sean's dad called us and they had gotten in a report from the National Hurricane Center in Gulfport at the power plant um, that this was going to be a magnitude 5 storm and that it was going to be very wide and very, very bad. And his dad called and said, we probably won't talk to you for a while. Um, this is where we'll be. And they were at Plant Watson in Gulfport and he said, just you know, watch on TV and see what happens and we'll call you when we can. And that was kind of how the conversation left. And we, at my house, were very tense. Monday the storm hit, when they said that it hit, it bypassed New Orleans, we were relieved. But then they said it hit Mississippi and I automatically just had this feeling in the pit of my stomach like this is, this is it. And it was very hard for me as a professional to stay at school and I have all of my students asking me questions and they want to know and it's my job to tell them what's going on and how it's going on. But at the same time, all I'm thinking about is I want to go to Mississippi and see if my family's okay. Can we get in the car today? Can we, can we drive through the rain and get there? How am I going to tell my kids, my own children, I have three children at home, how am I going to tell them if their grandfather and their aunt and their grandmother didn't make it through this storm? How am I going to do that? So it helped me for us to all be in the room together because there was just moments when we would talk about what was happening on TV and I just couldn't speak. Well, you hadn't heard from them. Yeah. I mean, I remember you and were And then we went through, we went through Monday night and we hadn't heard. And then Tuesday came and I came to school and I'm trying to keep a good face on for the kids and I'm trying to be the teacher. And I'm going to the bathroom in between classes and I'm bawling crying and I'm, my husband's calling me every 10 minutes, you know, I still haven't heard, I don't know anything. Tuesday night I stayed up all night long on the inter internet. I emailed Homeland Security, I emailed the president, Anderson I emailed Cooper. Anderson Cooper because I knew they were down there talking to people. I emailed Red Cross, the National Guard, I emailed the company that he worked for. We had seen at Burger King, a woman and a man who had driven their car from there, and the woman was standing in the parking lot holding her dog crying, and they had Harrison County tags on their plate. My husband went up to the woman and he said, what's left? And she said, Harrison High School, gone. Well, that was just right up the road from Plant Watson, and she said, Plant Watson is completely underwater. And my husband said, my dad is dead. We have to go to Gulfport and find his body. I've never in my whole life ever felt just that much loss all at one time because it wasn't just his father, it was his father, his stepmother, his sister, his grandmothers. He had an uncle who was on 2nd Street in Gulfport, he rode out the storm. We didn't know about any of these people. On the door. Um, and then that Wednesday at 9 o'clock, we got a phone call and I answered the phone and it was, it was Sean's dad and he said, I got your email, Rach. We're all alive. I don't know how long I'll be able to talk to you. I'm on the roof of the Hancock Bank building in downtown Gulfport on a satellite phone. We're all alive. Just to know that they were all living was enough. I mean, you knew it was going to be bad when you saw the governor and you saw the mayor come on and the look on their faces because they, they didn't know what to do because there was no way they were going to get all of those people out and you knew that it was gonna be bad. And my parents were already up here, which was good, because they had come up for me to have the baby. And, but my brother was still down there, and they were waiting to hear from him, and that was kind of scary, because yeah. Mandeville, they had some bad parts in Mandeville. And it was just, it was just scary. And, and eventually, when my father was able to go down there, it really terrified him, because there were no people there, and you know, you had to be able to, you had to wait a while before you could go back, which is along with all the areas. You had to wait to go back and see if there was anything left. And then when you went down there, it was very creepy. The people that were there, if the stores were open, they had to wait in line and they had a certain amount of goods that they could buy and that was it. It was just really scary kind of atmosphere. And my parents that have lived there for 40 years, they have three of my mother's good friends have moved away because they don't want to have to risk another type of hurricane again. One's moved to Texas, one's moved to Natchitoches, and the other one's moved to Prairieville near Baton Rouge. So, I mean, that's just people that weren't even really terribly affected by the storm, but don't want to have the possibility of it happening to them just based on what they've seen. And we found my family on Saturday um, after the storm on Monday. Um, they were from wa Waveland outside of, in Kiln, right outside of Gulfport, and their whole town was wiped out. So, um, we found them in Florida. We called the Red Cross, and we didn't know where they were, and we knew they were safe, but we just had to have that peace of mind to know that they had actually gotten out. And we found them in Florida at their children's house. And my dad was very relieved because it was one of his very dear, you know, family members. So.
it was a relief for us. So it was personal for all three of us, really. Mm -hmm. And the communication was scary because, I mean, you may have gotten through once, but then you couldn't get through again. And I remember my brother would have to, I mean, it was, he was just to get gas for anything. They'd have to go near Baton Rouge to get gas, which is about an hour away. You know, it was just everything was rationed out and you didn't know if your friends were okay or, you know, if somebody's house had been damaged or just, you know, it was just scary for everybody that was there. And on top of that, we have all these new students who mm -hmm. are, in, they're shell-shocked. That's the only way to put it. They came into our school with just these empty faces, and you kind of have an empty face because you're going through your own personal stuff and then trying to help them. And a lot of our students came from the Methodist Children's Home in New Orleans, oh, yeah. and they had been through a time of it. And the stories they would tell were just, I mean, you couldn't, you just couldn't comprehend it. Um, my father left Tuesday morning of the storm with the Sheriff's Department from Ruston to go to New Orleans to um, help people be evacuated off roofs. And he would call from a satellite phone every night and say, I rescued 800 people today. I cannot believe this is, this is New Orleans. I can't believe I'm in America. And it was, I was afraid for him. I was afraid for my husband's family. It was a very emotional time. And so it was helpful to come to school and kind of throw myself into the kids here and to help them get adjusted to go to the shelter and take the supplies they had brought, that was kind of healing, but it was, um, it was a hard time. It was a hard time. Rustin is here. And how far? And the damage was here. Yeah. I'll let you be the damage. Yeah. <laughs> right down here. Where Plaquemines Parish was once this wide, Plaquemines Parish is now this wide. Mm -hmm. it, wow. The rest of it's underwater. So, so St. Bernard, where Christian came from, Jefferson, uh, Shalasi, Orleans, Bria, Lakeview, terribly devastated. And Deja um, is from the Ninth Ward in New Orleans, which is almost yeah. near the near the levee. Yes, her very, house is almost near the levee. Yeah. You know, this is what New Orleans has always feared. I like the quote that my dad said when he got back from New Orleans. My dad um, fought in Vietnam, and his quote was, "I never in my lifetime thought I would ever see an American city look like New Orleans." and how sad it was for all of those people to be stranded with no help. And we were helping them as fast as we could. My name is Asia Jones, I'm 14 years old. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, the Night Ward. Um, I went to St. Mary's Academy High School in the Orleans Parish. Um, we left New Orleans August 28th, 3 a.m. in the morning. We was in Alexandria, Louisiana, but they didn't have any hotels um, available for us, so we came to Ruston by my cousin. He go um, to Louisiana to play football. It was four of my family members, uh, two babies, and um, two set of friends that we had. Uh, my grandma friends came, and uh, this man here gave us a two-bedroom house, and it was seven in one room, six in another room, and the rest was in the living room. Um, it was not comfortable at all. We didn't have any food. We had, he had to give us money to buy food and drinks. Um, I came here with five pairs of clothes and uh, three pairs of shoes. My hair was a mess. I was, you know, we had been on the road for so long because of traffic on the um, interstate and stuff. So everybody was tired and worn out because we had to drive so far to Ruston. We didn't know how far it was going to be. My grandma, um, Called a massive heart attack from um, so much stress on her heart because she had a, um, a heart valve replacement and it had triggered something in her, um, in her heart and it went off and she called a massive heart attack. The man who gave us the house had to take us take us to the hospital with her. She stayed in the hospital for three weeks. Um, she couldn't get out because the heart her heart wasn't pumping right. The it had slowed down a little bit. Um, the two-week-old baby, my cousin baby, she had got sick. She had um, threshed mouth because the milk was getting bad. We didn't have enough um, room for the milk to go in the refrigerator because it's too much food, and we didn't have any milk first. And she was um, getting really sick. I lived in um, two states. I went to three different schools since Katrina, four different cities. I have like 20 different teachers since Katrina. Um, the schools that I went to, I didn't like at all. Uh, I miss a lot of people in New Orleans. 
I don't know if some of them did or not. I haven't gotten contact with none of them, really. Um, people in Ruston, for the most part, have been nice. At the school, have been nice. But it's... It don't feel right at all. It's like people look at you different. First of all, because you're from New Orleans. Second of all, because I'm black. Then they look at you like, oh, she's from Katrina and she dirty and all that kind of stuff. That's what they say, some people. Um, students, at first when we came here, they didn't like us at all. They thought it was dirty. They didn't like the way we talk, but now they have opened up a little bit to us and want to know what we was about and all that. Are you planning to move back to Spain? I'm going to move back by my, hopefully by my cousin and go to my uh, school that I came from in New Orleans. The school that I went to, the students did come down and here from New Orleans, it was a lot of tension because I guess it was from them losing their houses or like not knowing what's going on back in New Orleans because like yeah it was a couple fights but everybody like well I did I understood where they were coming from yeah. because I know they didn't just come here being angry and mean and whatever it had to be a reason <laughs> and so it sort of you know smoothed out and so people made friends and it was sort of easier after the tension went away and people started getting news about what was happening to the houses or in New Orleans. I think what started is like people from here, they was getting like jealous or something because like they coming down and everybody was feeling sorry and stuff for donating and stuff like that. And so I heard that people from here was like teasing them stuff like that, saying that your mm -hmm. home gone and stuff like that. Jealousy. Yeah. yeah. And when they started, I, that just messed them up when I get just, I guess they got mad when, they, when that happened. Mm -hmm. I was, Bad, but it was, like she said, it's smooth out and stuff like that. Everybody got to know each other. And, you know. When they first came, no one wanted to get to know them because they're from New Orleans. Yeah. 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 But you never know what a person is going through unless you exactly. really get to know them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, it wasn't, I don't think it was, I wouldn't say it was our fault. It was both our fault because we could have got to know each other. Yeah. Rest in New Orleans. My oh, God, it's America. Yeah. See, I say in America, you can. We have the same likes. No, you never know. I feel if they if it would have happened to us, that they probably would have did the same thing, and it probably would have been better for us because like such a big city and stuff like that, all people down there help us out. We small compared to New Orleans, so yeah. if all of them would have helped us out, then it would have been better. So. It was mm -hmm. it was fun feeling like I was helping the new kids or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, help them, under, like, not understand, but get used to life in Reston Junior High. Because I remember when I first met Bria, one of the people who came down from New Orleans, it was, she was in my gym class. And she was like, well, where do I go from here? What do I do here? Well, what does this teacher do? And it, it was really fun. Yeah. Making, it made me feel important. And like, right. like I was doing something to help them. I like how they talk. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Their accents. It's, it's funny. <laughs> well, like, I remember the first time that I saw Hurricane Katrina. It was all in the news, and they were talking about a hurricane coming in, you know, like through New Orleans, and, but we didn't know how big it was going to be. We, we, you know, it went from a Category 3 to a huge Hurricane 5. And yeah, we saw it on the computer with the projector and everything. Everybody's like, oh, my goodness. Oh, I know. <laughs> I was scared. Like, yeah, everybody yeah, was we scared. Were, it was, yeah. It was sort of more, it was excitement and you know, everybody was scared at the same time and looking at what hurricanes could do. And, yeah. and then we did whole projects and stuff on hurricanes. It was and that journal topic and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What 10 yeah. things would you take with you if you had to leave? I mean, how can you choose 10 things? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Like, 10 things. Mm -hmm. can't like 10 suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it sort of made it talk. worse because thinking about the ten things that you would take, then you're talking about well, when the when the hurricane did hit, then you everybody was like, well, they don't have anything. They don't even have a choice what ten things they're gonna yeah. take. They just evacuated. Right. Turned into a good Samaritan type thing. You know? Yeah. Everybody yeah. just wanted to go out and help. Yeah. 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 yeah, I remember um, we went to Farmville and um, say because everybody was staying in hotels and you know family homes. They didn't, the Red Cross wouldn't help them. They wouldn't give them any funding. So, like all the churches and everything, we created little baskets and 
you know, stuff to give them. We gave yeah. them toys and old clothes and food and toiletries and everything that they need. It was amazing to see how many people actually came out and helped because when we went to the Civic Center, it was so many people. They didn't even call us because they like said they put your name on the list and it was so many people. It was like a stack of papers saying how many people wanted to help. I heard uh, about the teachers letting them stay in their house and stuff like that. Like, I, I could let them stay in my house, but it's kind of like hard to trust them because, you know, they might, they might be one of them people to try to thank you. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. But we donated. We got, my daddy gave money and stuff like that. We helped yeah. him out. But you know, that early, you know, no, it was still whenever nobody knew what's flooded, what's, is my house still there? You yeah. know, it's like, right. so, you know, if somebody had come up, you know, and we knew people, you know, if we knew any of the evacuees, you know, I, nobody stayed at our house because, you know, we didn't know anybody. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. if we had, you know, that would, that's just the type of, you know, parents I've got, they'd have been like, oh, you know, kids go sleep in the living room, you know, they, they're taking right. their bed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it was. It was really weird. It would, it would have been hard for me to, you know, know, well, you know, is my house down there? You know, is it still there? How about my neighbor, you know? And when am yeah. I going back to school? You know, I still got friends, you know. It was amazing how, you know, everyone was like, well, because I don't know, you know, Kelly, mm -hmm. she, they had a little African-American girl stay with them, whatever. And they, I was like, you guys are the African-American girls. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Kelby, you are Caucasian. <laughs> I was like, y'all, this girl's standing She's like, yeah, she's normal. She's just like us. And that was my issue. I really, when I went to volunteer, I didn't want to help the Caucasians. I, had, I was like, I don't really have anything in common with them. But it was me. After I, I mean, I did help some, but I didn't help more, like a lot. I kind of regret that, too. Because we're all the same age. You know, we all go through the same things. It's yeah. not like... Yeah, we're from different parts of the state, and we went through different things. What like they went through Katrina, and we didn't. But we're all when it, when it comes down to it, we're all the same. You know, we're all kids. We're all in the same grades, or you know, close to it at least. We go through the same things. So it wasn't that hard to get to know people once yeah. you sat down and like took away all the New Orleans and Katrina. It's just yeah. like regular people. Yeah. Everybody expected a culture shock whenever they were like, oh, you know, yeah. we're going to have New Orleans kids coming up yeah. here. <laughs> everybody was like, yeah. you know, everybody was all freaked out, you know, but then whenever we actually, you know, talked to like Hannah, I knew Hannah. Oh, yeah. And I was just amazed at how she held together so much. I mean, her, they found out her house was, they found out on the internet, you know, her house was oh, destroyed. Yeah. She had, she her dad looked up whatever their neighborhood online and they found, they saw an aerial picture of her house. And, you know, I was like, I couldn't, you know, go to school the next day. My dad had memories down, he lived down south. And whenever uh, Katrina happened, he left uh, about 3 o'clock in the morning the day before. And he came back, and he was in Metairie, so he wasn't directly where it was hit. But they were still hit by the storm surge because of the levees. And he came downstairs, and everything was completely destroyed. He had newspaper clippings from whenever he was on the football team in high school. He had wedding photos. He had photos of his grandmother that, you know, had passed away. I mean, he had all the great memories and, you know, little drawings that we had given him when we were, like, five, you know, just stuff mm -hmm. like that. See, people are so much stronger than you think because my dad, first thing that he said to me whenever he first came up here, I said, well, Dad, what are you going to do without all that stuff? He was like, he said, that's all it is. He said, stuff is just stuff, and if you can't live without your stuff, then you shouldn't have it in the first place. And, you know, exactly. I, I was just like, right. Ooh, yeah. 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 what? Yeah. <laughs> I know that one of my friends, Hannah, that, you know, because she was so close to us, we uh, bought her a yearbook from here, and we signed it and have it, had everybody in the class sign it, you know, just to yeah. remind her that, you know, we are still her friends, even though she moved away, that... She's still a part of our everyday lives. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That was cool. I guess what I um, what impacted me the most with the whole situation was that we all saw the the news images and the the news stories, and um, because it was going on in another part of our state, we it, it was it was like we knew it was happening, but we really didn't um, feel it. But um, it started really hitting home when the kids started flooding into our school. There were days when we'd have one or two trickle in in the mornings and then there were days when the office would be full of parents and students. And I just remember going in and thinking, you just can't believe that this is happening. And we were, like I said, we were seeing the images on TV and hearing on the news, but then you'd meet the, the kids and the parents and they were in shock. I mean, we all, I mean, we thought, you know, we were, but they really were. And we started getting in the uniforms and school supplies and, and those kinds of things to help them out. Um, 
but it's just one of those times that you'll never forget and trying to make them feel as comfortable as, as we could and um, make them feel as much at home as we could knowing that, the, that their whole life and their, their schools and, and everything that they were accustomed to and, and used to was, was gone, you know, I mean, a lot of it. And um, just helping them through those times, just helping them through those days. And, and they, they wanted, you know, they, they were, um, I mean, they were okay to be here, but, but they really didn't want to be here. They wanted to be home. And so it was just took all of us working together to, to make them as comfortable as, as we could. I, I guess what I would, what I would say to, to people who go through a catastrophe or a tragedy of this magnitude is that, you know, we, we're all here to help. I mean, that's what, what, why we should look at it. Um, and, and because it's happened in our, in our state, I mean, it even brought it closer to home, but I just know that, that the, that the, our kids here and our teachers with the, with the all pulling in together and um, supporting these, these families, these, these students, and, and just doing as much as we could to, to ease those fears. Um, if that's what, you know, we needed to do at the time. And they would do that for us. If we were in the same situation, you know, they, they would have taken us in and done the same for us, I feel. Hey, my name is Shalisa Kaiser. I'm from Jefferson Parish of the West Bank in New Orleans, in Marrero. And I evacuated down here with my two sisters, my mama and my grandma. And we had went to Texas and then up tight had a blowout. And we had to turn around and we went all the way through Monroe and Alexandria and stuff looking for a hotel, but they didn't have a hotel open. So the mama called the Louisiana State Police and they told us to turn around and go back and we're gonna be in a small town resting and we're gonna see this big civic center so we went to the civic center and we had to leave our pet bird in the car for about four days because they couldn't keep the pets until the man told us about the, the, the little touch of nature around from the civic center so we walked the bird down there and they let him stay at the um the pet touch of nature so they treated us nice at the, at the shelter and they gave us everything we need because we only thought we was leaving for two days and you know, only packed for just like about two days and they gave us clothes and food and everything we needed. I'm living um, on South Viano, like by South Parkway in the trailer park, but I got a house, got the house. I, I think that the teachers teach you nice and I just have fun, make friends and stuff. Do you plan to go back? I don't know, cause mama, mama was thinking about it, but then she stopped because the rent is high up there, and we ain't got too much money to pay for the houses, cause it's too high. Hey, at the beginning of the year, there were a couple of bad students here, cause like they just rushed into things, like they made all the students just rush into school. Yeah, a lot of that's probably the, cause. A lot impressed. of them felt kind of bad because they didn't want to be here. And so they were just kind of angry at a lot of people and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I did make some friends, though. I like how they talk. Yeah, yeah. I do, too. Yeah. I like when they yeah. say, hey. Awesome. hey. They're just sad for the people because they left their homes, their family and friends and things. Some people don't even know where their family and friends are. Yeah, and we ask them every day, you know, you, you still all right from the hurricane? And they be, yeah, we're all right, we're all right. We like it up here. And uh, some of them say they're even moving up here. They're getting houses built and moving out of wherever they were in, FEMA houses, whatever. They say they still miss it down there, though. Yeah, they say they wish they could go back, but they like it up here, too. It makes you, it makes you feel bad. Just think if you lost your home like that. It's just... Yeah, it doesn't seem real like it would ever happen to anybody. And how it happened to them like that is sad. They didn't have no time to even pack up what they had. I always wanted to go to New Orleans, but now I'm scared to go up there because I'm scared to drive anything like another hurricane like home yeah uh i had three families stay at my house uh one didn't stay long but we had one that come for about two months the guy that was there he was nervous and he was a chef he was he lived down there he had a restaurant called hillary's and uh, he cooked for us every night it was it was really good well do y'all remember when we did the flood bucket yeah 
right after it happened, we were doing this little lesson on hurricanes as soon as that one was happening, which is kind of, I don't know if it was a coincidence or it happened on purpose. But yeah, I remember we got a little note homes, had a list of stuff they needed, brought it home, put it together, got a picture in the paper. It's pretty neat. It made me feel good that we could actually help them in, the, in some way at least. It might not have been that big of a deal, but some people it was. Yeah, it made me feel good inside. Did any of y'all like help down with the civics or anything? Cause I didn't help at first. I was kind of scared at first. Cause yeah, it was kind of hurtful to see those people just laying on those beds at the civics center. But I made friends down there. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. My grandmother works at Emmanuel Baptist Church. And they have like a little youth building outside, and they had a bunch of people in there, and we'd bring them food and stuff, and give them clothes. Or pizza for them sometimes. Yeah, we did that at my church for a little while. We had a bunch of little kids. We played basketball with them, and we had some. We got brought in some beds and some food, and every night I'd play pool with some of the kids. It was, it was a lot of fun. We did, them out. we did that at my church. We had a barbecue, and we would go back and forth picking people up from the from the civic center. And we did it for a few Sundays. It was fun, and a lot of people were able to get real food, something to fill them up. On the PowerPoint, Miss Singer Claire at this show where all the houses in Mississippi and New Orleans got devastated from the storm. We went down there, me and my dad, and uh, we helped clean out the houses, and you could look in the streets, and there was probably like 30 feet high piles of wood and, and junk. It was, it was crazy. And, and that saw, wasn't even the worst part of the whole, of where it happened. Is also on the PowerPoint, our teacher showed us different things, house materials, and water that was contaminated. Yeah, it was really and sad to see that. People were knee deep or waist deep actually in it. Some kids were uh, the water is up to their neck. I don't see how they can walk in that. I'd be scared. We got yeah. to see how all the people were just just crammed up in a super dome and how they were like it was a whole bunch of dead bodies in the back and how they couldn't even just get the elderly out it was just bad some of the people just didn't want to leave their house they just got up in the attic and just tried to wait it out and they told them that if they didn't listen i mean they was they were going to regret it but if they didn't just bring an axe or something up there to chop their way out if they needed to yeah i was kind of um like thinking why did they stay when they knew a hurricane was coming. But I, I knew kind of like, well, they loved their house so much that they wouldn't want to leave it. And they probably thought that there wasn't like, there wasn't going to be any big hurricane. Yeah, and some people couldn't get out, like the elderly or the disabled, some, they couldn't find a way to get out. So they had to take shelter in the Superdome or whichever, any shelter. The people that didn't want to leave, I mean, their house was basically all they had, some, most of them. Yeah, no transportation, couldn't find a bus, take them out of the city, stuff like that. Yeah, some people actually thought the storm wasn't going to be that, that, that tough, you know, that serious, so they, they didn't leave. I think they should uh, rebuild New Orleans because people live there in the city, you know, people homes from there, so they want to go back, you know, that's where they're from, so they won't want to go back. I think that they should keep it on the news so people will be aware of what the situation is because some of the families are still being affected and can't find lost ones. I mean, if you just take it off the news, it doesn't mean it's going to go away. It's not going to make it get any better. I think that they should rebuild the, those, the walls or whatever that keeps the hurricanes from Levy. coming, the levees, <laughs> from before they start letting people actually start coming back to move back because... I mean, if that all happens again, then, I mean, all this is going to, I mean, all this sadness is going to kind of come back like that. Yeah, some people have forgotten about the hurricane because, like, don't nobody think about it anymore. But there's still people hurt. There's still people, like, that need help. And they need to, fi they need to figure out a way to help them and keep it on the news. I think that they should rebuild the world because, like, that's still somewhere home, and a lot of people are still not comfortable living here and resting, and they just want to go home. I made a lot of friends, that's for sure. There's this one kid named Christian Hanna. He's, he's really fun to be around. Learned a lot of stuff about New Orleans. Fish called Chupit. <laughs> we gave him a nickname called Chupit. <laughs> it's 
pretty funny. Yeah, he joined my band, Emissary. Uh, we played the other day. Yeah, he's a good bass player. Hello, my name is Christian Hanna. I'm from St. Bernard, straight out of Miro, and I'm here to tell my story about how I came to Ruston, Louisiana from Miro. Well, it all started on a Friday night when we were watching the TV, and my mom, and we were looking at the news, and my mom was like, oh my God, there's a hurricane coming. And my dad was like, we have to leave, because this is going to be bad. And my mom was like, Psh, they've had tons of hurricanes, and they haven't hit us, so I want to stay here. I don't, don't want to leave. My dad's like, this is a Category 5, so we have to go. So we, we slept that night. The next day, we looked at the news. It was still a 5, and my mom, she still didn't want to go. But my dad was like, I'm not taking a chance. We're leaving. So finally, once we packed all our stuff, we left Saturday evening, and right before the traffic got bad. And um, we originally went to Vidalia, Mississippi. And when we got there, it was all right. About two days later, we found out that a Category 3 hurricane was coming there. So we were like, oh, God, not again. So then my, my grandma, we were with my grandparents, so we were looking everywhere for somewhere to go. And Mom, uh, she looked in the papers and she saw this place called Ruston and they had the, we went to this place called the Expo where they have like horse races and stuff and they let us stay there. And it was pretty, they were all nice, they like gave us, they let us stay there for free and everything. And it was fun. And then eventually about three days later, a man from Lincoln Parish Park came there and he told us, hey, you can come stay with us for free. So we were like, yeah, we're going to take that. So we went there. It was a beautiful park. There's trees everywhere, so it's nice and shady. So after that, like after a week, we stayed there. We loved it. And my mom was like, oh, "You have to go to school. You're gonna be stupid if you don't go to school." So she's like, "I'm like, I don't want to go to school." But she's like, "No, you have to go. You have to graduate this year." That's stunk. Cause it was my eighth grade year. So, nah, but that was all right. So about a week later, I went to Russian Junior High School. I was nervous, really bad. And when I got there, like the first day, like I didn't say a word to anybody because I was so shy. The next day, when I came to my first period class for the first time, I met so much people and it was so fun. I made a lot of friends. I have, I have more here than I had back home. Then, after, now today, I have so much friends, it's hard to keep them off of me. <laughs> but I do not have an accent. They got the accents, I'm telling you. I talk fine, they don't want my accent. Actually, and a week later, I went home to uh, see all my friends. Like, in my, my old school, Our Lady of Prom Soccer, we had this thing called the Tomato Festival. And it's an assembly where we have bands play, and it was for our school. And at the end of our school year, we had this thing where all the eighth graders take this balloon, and they let it go as, like, it's like to follow Jesus and his path. And we didn't get to do that, unfortunately. Thanks, Katrina. So... When we went down there, they let us do that at the Tomato Festival, so that was really nice. So I got, and I got to see all my friends. It was kind of depressing, but I, I, I was glad to see them. And when I went to go see my house, it was pretty bad. There was mold everywhere. It was, I couldn't even recognize it. One house was, it was not even, it was in the middle of the street. It came off the slab. It was like right in the middle of the street. It was like, it's hard to believe that a heart can't get do some of this stuff, but I mean, it's bad. And when I, I, was, I, was kind of, I was kind of living two lives at the same time, talking to my friends on the internet every day from back home, and I'm talking to my friends all over here all day. All my friends, actually, they, uh, most of them headed to St. Tammany Parish, because I guess their parents like to drive far, but no, I'm not taking a risk. So I, I'm coming up here, and I like it, and I want to stay here. Just be thankful for what you have because, as you can see, it can be gone in like a matter of days. It can just be gone quickly. So you be thankful every day of what you have and the friends you have and the place that you live. Just be thankful. Just live it every day like it's your last.